Welcome to K-Drama School. I'm your host, Grace Jung, and class is now in session. episode of K-Drama School. So I want to congratulate everybody who is listening. Thank you. Um, Congratulations. I don't know why I'm congratulating you. It's not like you guys did anything. I'm just kidding. You guys are a very big part of this whole journey. If it weren't for you, I would not be motivated to do any of these podcast episodes. So thank you so much for listening. Thank you for your loyal listenership and thank you for your uh, loving feedback i really appreciate you guys genuinely i do this for you i do this because of you so thank you it's been an interesting journey and i have a very special guest on this episode who we'll talk to right after i do my monologue but she is also a very big part of this podcast's journey, and there are many things that I learned while doing this. You know, I learned that I can just edit. I can edit video. I can edit films. I can do it. I can edit sound. If I need to delegate, I can do it. I can find good, talented artists and people to help me out. I can pay them, and I can get shit done. This whole entire process taught me so much more than only podcasting. It taught me about lighting, taught me about presence, just camera presence, taught me things about sound, taught me things about listening, how to be a good listener, which is another skill in addition to being good at talking. Yeah, who knew? That's a skill. You know, I was I was just kind of thinking to myself, I was like, you know, I'm really lucky that I'm a comedian. Like, I don't know what else I would do. Like, I'm good at talking. I like to talk, you know, but I realized I realized this on Thanksgiving, like when I meet people who talk a little too much, I'm not talking. OK, what do I mean by talk too much? I guess what I mean is like people who don't take a break to perhaps check in with the other party. Like that to me is somebody who talks too much. A person who talks without any self-awareness is somebody who talks too much, yeah. And if I hear myself doing that on a podcast, I'll usually try to edit myself out, yeah. Because it's like, come on, it's insufferable, you know? Like I noticed this on Thanksgiving because on Thanksgiving, I went to a friend's house and somebody had invited somebody who was talking way too much. Like. I could hear him talking for 30 minutes straight without resting at all. And meanwhile, the person, the poor person that's locked in a conversation with him, that person is just like saying, "Uh uh-huh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay. Really? Oh, yeah. They're doing that for 30 minutes. This person doesn't ask that other person a single question. This person (laughs) doesn't, like, read the room in any way. You know, this person would go and like show people videos, like five to 10 minute long videos and be like, oh, look at this. This is really funny. I was just like, oh, my God, this guy's a nightmare. So that's what I mean. Like when I, when I meet a person who talks too much, is like, I'm talking about a, I'm talking about a person like that. A person like that is somebody who talks too much. And I don't want to be that. So I was like, how do how can I be a good listener? You know, and that's something that this podcast taught me. It was teaching me how to be a better listener. And it also taught me like my intolerance for some certain kinds of people, certain kinds of talkers, you know, like I just I became a speech connoisseur. Let's put it that way. I became a talking and listening connoisseur after starting this podcast. So thank you for being on this journey with me for the last two years. I'm, I'm, we're about to celebrate the two year anniversary for this podcast very soon. And 
you know, I, like, again, time and time again, I, I was always like, should I quit? Like, I don't want to do this anymore. It's a lot of work. And I'm sure, as you've noticed, I re I've reduced the length of these podcasts a great deal. Yeah, some of the episodes are only like 15 minutes, 20 something minutes long. And it's like that for a reason. It's because I have cut down on the amount of interviews I am doing. Yes, yes, that's a thing. It's just because I don't want to interview as many people anymore. Maybe I'm running out of people I want to talk to. That's not necessarily true. It's just I I want to focus this more on Korean dramas and leave it at that. Yeah, I, I guess I'm trying to rebrand or redo the whole thing in some way. Whatever. We'll see. This is all a work in progress. This is all changing and it's evolving. It's changing with time. Just like I'm changing with time, you know? Like lately, you guys, I... I just wake up in the morning. I wake up at a reasonable hour in the morning too. I wake up around like eight. You know, I just wake up and then I have some tea and then I read tarot cards and then I do yoga. That's right. And then I'll have some breakfast and then I'll work out and then I'll have a snack and then I will go for a walk and then I'll have lunch or dinner and then I will write. And then it's like 6 p.m. and I'm done with my day. And then I'm bored for the next like five to six hours. It's it's bizarre how, how I can get so much done <laughs> in such a short amount of time and then just be bored for the rest of the evening. Yeah, it's it's been a very peaceful time, very peaceful. And I, I am grateful for this period. I am super grateful, but I also get bored out of my mind. I do. I, I am super bored lately. And I'm just like, how? How am I bored? You know, I, I have so much to do, but I just decided I'm going to focus on one thing at a time. And right now I'm writing a book. As I said last week, I was, I've been working on a book. You guys, I wrote 50,000 words. Yeah. I reached my goal, 50,000 words, NaNoWriMo, I did it. Now I'm at like 52,000 and I'm going to see for the next three days, how many more words can I write? But yeah, I'm going to have a draft of, of a book by the end of this month, which is phenomenal. Yeah, NaNoWriMo, it's doable. And you guys don't even have to do it in November. You guys can do it in December, January, February. You can do it whenever you want. I recommend it. If you want to write a book, do it. Why not? It's something to do and it keeps you occupied. One thing that I did notice about myself as a writer is that sometimes, actually a lot of the times, I'll just go to the page without really knowing what it is that I'm going to be writing about next, but something does come out. Yeah. So what does that show? That shows some self-trust. That shows a sense of exploratoriness, exploration, adventuresomeness, What's the word? <laughs> I was an English major. I don't know the word. It shows an adventurous spirit. Yeah, an, an adventurous spirit. Yes, a curiosity, uh, bravery. Yes, it shows that. And again, a sense of trust. And I was like, you know what? I'm into that. I am happy with myself and that quality. So here I am, you know, here I am being a writer every day and being a, a California living babe, I guess. <laughs> what do you guys think of this? Last night, I had a dream that I had a backpack on my back and it was full of something. I don't know what, but it was so heavy. It was so heavy that I could not stand up. Like I was squatting. I was squatting in the middle of the street. The light had changed. It was time for me to walk across the street and I was trying to walk, but I could not walk. So I was like, you know what? My car is parked not too far from here, just like a block away. Let me just walk to my car. And I wouldn't take the backpack off for some reason. I, I was just like trying to like, there were these poles and I was just trying to like pull myself up through my upper arm strength to drag myself to my car and I couldn't I couldn't it was so heavy and I just wouldn't take my backpack off and I'm like what is this dream about what is dragging me down what is keeping me weighted down to the ground what's happening what what's pulling me back I don't know I don't know I need to figure that out I have to figure it out I don't know what it is but you guys today's episode is going to discuss a very good show 
a show that came out 10 years ago. It's called Moon Embracing the Sun. It's an NBC drama, came out in the year 2012, and it stars Kim Soo-yeon and Han Ga-in. Two very, very sexy Hallyu stars. Oh my goodness. It is a drama that aired two years prior to Kim Soo-yeon's appearance on that very major mega hit show my love from the star so this show this 2012 historical fantasy period piece moon embracing the sun this is the show that actually catapulted kim seon's career uh domestically as a huge tv star yeah yeah and kim seon's technically been acting since he was in high school like he did some theater and he's been on television like as a supporting role and he's done some like teen k-dramas but this was like his big one like this one like blew him up because he was like the next handsome hot face on the block kind of thing and this show is actually based on a novel of the same title written by Chung eun Kwal, and she is a very popular uh, novelist whose novels have been adapted into many other shows, one of them being uh, Seung Kyung Gwan Scandal and the other one being Lovers of the Red Sky. Moon Embracing the Sun, huge hit, and it stars Han Ga-in, which is an interesting casting because Han Ga-in, she does not do a whole lot of television. Yeah, she is mostly known for commercials, all right, so she's known as what's called an, a CF actress and 2012 was a really busy year for her because not only was moon embracing the sun a huge hit but she was also in that movie uh architecture 101 and that was a box office record-breaking movie at the time same year 2012 and she was this mega star by the end of the year i will be clear this show is not based on any real king who has lived in the past it is not based in any sort of reality other than the fact that there was an actual kingdom and there also happened to be uh, shamans so culturally there are some elements that are that resonate but this is not an actual king like these things did not actually happen yet yeah, this is a historical fantasy fictionalized period piece okay so i want to be clear on that the storyline for moon embracing the sun and the show's pacing are both perfect for a hit k-drama series all right like you have two very handsome beautiful looking actors right and then you have you have amnesia <laughs> okay like classic k-drama element you have amnesia you have a saboteur gotta have a saboteur otherwise like what is this all about right you gotta have a saboteur somebody who messes everything up along the way oh you also have the king the the king's affections which are you know constantly lying in wait like we gotta win the king's affections right like the women of the court are trying to win the king's affection and you know have his baby like that was the only way for women to acquire power back in the day was to have the king's baby so there are all these motivations, right? All these things going on. Winning the king's affections was like winning the Chebo's affections, right? Like, that's why today the Chebo are nicknamed royal family, right? Like they call the they call the Chebo's son Huang Teja, right? Like the crown prince. It's like a nickname, right? It's it's very cheesy, but it's like the nickname. You have a very interesting character, a supporting role on this show called Seol and she is played by Yoon Seung-a, and Seol is a very queer character, okay? She's queer in the sense that she cross-dresses, all right? She dresses like a man, and she presents herself as a man, but she's a woman who is devoting her life to protecting Yeonu. Like, that's her whole entire thing. And, and you, of course, have this queer love aspect, right? It's like, oh, is this an unrequited queer love thing? that whole thing is going on and you know a lot of the times korean historical period pieces they almost always have a queer character it's like it's a, it's almost like a given it's almost like you have to have one yeah so so is that aspect of this show and you also have the uh very uh veteran actress 
Kim Young-ae playing the Queen Dowager. Unfortunately, Kim Young-ae is no longer living. She passed away in 2017 uh, due to cancer, but she's been in dozens and dozens of Korean TV shows, dozens of films, and she is absolutely a masterful dramatic actress. So check out her filmography if you want to see some quality performance. Kim Young is the way. In fact, just watch Moon Embracing the Sun. I love this show. I personally love this show. I think it has like all the qualities of an excellent K drama, and Kim Young is a huge part of that. Enjoy the show. Today's guest is Julieta Degeze, who is a dear friend of mine, a Berlin based comedian. And she was with us when this podcast began. So she was uh, on the very, very first episode of this podcast. And, she, you know, she's a dear friend. And we get into all sorts of stuff together. So let's talk to Julieta Degeze. Hey. Wow. I put this unicorn because I thought if it's going to be, like, an important episode, I think we should <laughs> we should be, like, unicorn. <laughs> I love it. It's great. It's... I think I remember when you were talking about buying it or, or Tobias said you had b bought it or it was, like, an event. I remember that. Yeah, and I thought, I will never use this again. And then I use it every day. <laughs> like, I'm like... <laughs> I feel so special. <laughs> you know, I think I think clothes like that are important for us to have in our closets, you know, to like make us feel good or special. Yeah, because when can you be a unicorn, really? Unless someone says like, you're a unicorn and you're like, you're trying to fuck me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, has that happened? With somebody like, I want to fuck you in your unicorn costume? No, I guess no, in my costume, no. Did you cut a hole in the back so that they can access it? No, but I, I don't think this is, this is, I think it's for children, but like, um, oh my gosh, but they, okay. Wait, but they do put like a little zipper so you can, oh. so you can oh, go okay. to the toilet. <laughs> oh, okay, yes, right, to go to the toilet. To the okay, okay, toilet. Okay. I mean, you could... I guess do something else. It's a okay. it's a, it's a um, unicorn slipper slip 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 <laughs> slip. There you go. Yeah, very good. I understand. Uh, how, how are you? Are you doing? Uh, I was going to ask you the same. I'm having some vermouth, you know, at home. Um, what are you it's, drinking? Um, vermouth. Oh wow! Yeah, right? Very very. Is it fancy? Uh, Classic, fancy Victorian woman. Yes. Is that what they did? <laughs> I don't I assume. Maybe, like, I don't know, Great Depression era. They drank a lot of vermouth. <laughs> oh, cool. No, I feel, like, so fancy when I have vermouth because it's such a, like, European thing. Yeah. But it's actually, like, the cheapest thing that you get. Like, even the wine, uh, like, family is, like, the cheapest yeah. thing. Because you see the yeah. wine family, but it's a bit, like, sweet. Um yeah. So, and you yeah. put some orange peel in it. You have to put some orange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if not, it's not really like, you know. What are you doing? What's happening? It's so early for you. Not that oh. early. It's like 11 a.m. It's not so bad. Mm. Are you doing yeah. something today? It's your day full of comedy? Uh, yeah, I have a I have a stand-up show at night. Yeah, I'm going to be Are doing... you closing, hosting? I'm closing. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I never I never host. I I think I hosted literally one show in LA when somebody asked me like to host. Uh typically I don't really host shows. I don't A, I don't think I'm a very good host. B, I don't like hosting. I think it's like a job, you know? It's it's a lot of work. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, a stand up itself like just doing a spot is work but the thing about hosting is you always are like coming back and if maybe they don't like you which is not the the case i mean like, yeah. unless you're like the shittiest host in the whole world well then but yeah. like usually people like you and then you don't have to be that family and like yeah. if you at the end of your hosting 
experience, people are like, oh, you're fine. You should be a comedian. Then you did it like the, the best job. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. You yeah. have to constantly pay attention as the host. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you, can't, you can't just do your set and then fuck off. Like you have to just really pay attention. And it's it's a lot for an hour, hour and a half. Yeah. I, I don't want to do it. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, tonight I'm closing. Uh, I'm going to be doing a longer set. I'll be doing 20 minutes. Um, <laughs> yeah, like when you when you do longer sets, like, because I, I know you did your uh, hour special, like earlier <laughs> in the year, or was it last year? It was last year, but I didn't like, we, I didn't do an hour. I did like a closer to 40 minutes. And it That's was like, long. yeah, yeah, but it's, it was like way too much for me and for them. Like, I, I thought I was oh, like, really? no, because we started the show super late and it, it was not a full room. Because um, uh-huh. like the, the other show that was previously was super full and whatever. And then this, this one is was more expensive and it's Spain. So people okay. didn't want to. Uh, I did. Uh, I did find it very challenging to be yeah. like. And also, like, I realized that I did, I did uh, rehearse and everything, like, uh, something that I actually don't do in stand-up, <laughs> which I should. But I, I did rehearse for my solo, and then I was like, it started, and I was like, I don't remember anything. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. But you, end up, you still ended up doing it. Like, what would happen as you're, like, you're, like, blanking, but it would eventually... Well, I was just, like, things were coming back. And then I did, so I did, like, a show previously where I did, like, a set. But I was not going to use this set. I was going to use it as an intro for, like, what it was coming. But at the end, because I just did that set, I only remember that set for a little bit. So I had to, like, do it again. <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, there were people that actually stay from a short to to see me to they from there. So I was like, oh no, they listen to the same thing again. Uh. <laughs> but I was. It, it seemed like I was super relaxed, even though I was not. But that's yeah. a good thing. It's a good yeah. thing that you that they don't see the freaking out thing. You're like <laughs> comedy. Yeah. Am I right? <laughs> yeah i think i think that's absolutely important you have to you have to maintain the illusion of control the whole time yeah yeah um so like when i was i did a longer set last month as well and i was just kind of like How oh much was i it? just have to it was 20 oh, i did okay. 20 20 last month i'm doing 20 again tonight next week i'm gonna do 20 again Ooh. and i'm i'm figuring out like oh if i just do stories like i could do like some short jokes in the beginning but i could do stories and i could like make the stories link to one another then it becomes easier to remember it also eats up a lot of time like i was just sort of strategizing in that way that's a that's a good that's a good one yeah 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 Yeah, I, i i i there's a lot of things i need to write and I'm like holding, I'm using my own material, but it's like, it's time to, to get more deep on things. Uh, but I'm like, but this is, this is a good way of like doing a longer set. Cause I go, I will do a longer set next week. So I, that's a good idea to do like a story where you mm-hmm. have like a lot of, and then you can see what works and what doesn't like. Yes. And I, I noticed that if you tell a story, it engages the audience more because they're like, mm. oh, I want to know what's going to happen at the yeah. end of this journey. So they're listening more. So you kind of hold their attention. And I was like, oh, OK, so this is just something I'm learning. Like, oh, I do have stories. I do have stories because before when I'm doing shorter sets, I would never do stories because I'm like, is- I have a sh- I don't have yeah. time. You have to like be bum, 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 and then uh, entertain yeah. them for seven minutes or whatever. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's just not enough time. So uh, this was like a good strategy. I just figured out. Um, are you doing a lot of shows right now in Berlin? Like, what's the scene like right now at the at the moment? I don't know what's happening. <laughs> uh, there's a lot of shows happening, so there's a lot of things happening every night. Uh, but there's like. Um, after COVID, that's like a renewal of the scene. So basically, yes. there's a lot of new people, young people, and people that just started doing comedy for like three months, and now they they run shows. Sure. Sure. So it's like so. Um, 
so it's kind of funny to see how everything and then the old people that I started with doing crop the old people like they they're not old but they're just the like the hags yeah <laughs> yeah the the generation that I started with like they're um maybe doing their solo shows or like traveling or like doing other stuff so uh basically I I focus um because also I don't have a lot of time but I focus on hosting my own shows and then yeah. like doing pay gigs um yeah. around I did like one in Prague it was kind of fun and then oh, yeah. like oh yeah sounds so fun oh my god I miss Europe <laughs> I, want to I, I like that you put you put it in your story you put it in your story like I mean Berlin and then you put like this big bed with like a big carpet I was like uh did you slip here like I don't care like <laughs> just um <laughs> no it was a beautiful like room with huge bed like a big yeah. rug and and the person who posts those rooms they're like a stylist in berlin uh, okay. and i was like oh my god i miss berlin <laughs> I yeah do. it's I like berlin. it is it is um i mean it is a tough city to live but it's close to everything the thing right now what's mm -hmm. happening is like it's super hard. like before I love to be here even though like I don't know it's hard being li living here mm -hmm. but I like it because you can like travel to places and it's not expensive yeah. but now because of because of everything that's happening like flight tickets are super expensive and like like yeah. uh, like you know before it was maybe 50 euros to travel yeah. to Portugal and now it's yeah. like 200 300 <gasps> euros Oh shit. So you cannot do like a little <laughs> escapade and like so it's kind of like shit. Yeah. Man, that really sucks. Yeah, we should blame think... Putin. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's Putin's fault, but you know, it's like everybody's kind of involved in the whole thing, right? It's it sucks. Gas prices here are so expensive and um, yeah, inflation. Yeah, when, it's like overall, like everywhere. When, when you told me about like how your groceries like almost tripled, I was like, oh my gosh, that's fucked up. Yeah, I was not expecting this. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I, I was like, no, Germany is always the same. That's why everyone hates it. <laughs> but like now it's, they're not really catching up because usually like in my country, inflation is so common that... Um, the government tries to like not cure inflation they cannot cure it because they're bad at economy but like give you like you can pay in payments or mm -hmm. um what else can you do like yeah i don't know they give you like every four months they give you like more in your salary so you can catch okay. up to the inflation yeah yeah but in germany they're so slow that yeah like if there was inflation from last year and now they're like giving you two euros extra per hour minimum wage okay. yeah 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 uh no it's actually that that's actually very telling like certain nations and their economies are uh structurally and systemically designed to handle inflation which is a reality it's something that happens in uh capitalist economies and with countries that are more bureaucratic or more rigid or perhaps they don't admit to the possibility of inflation even happening they're unprepared yeah they're super unprepared they're like oh <laughs> i feel like i feel like someone in some point they were like <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, so it's kinda, yeah it is i it mean is but oi. yeah berlin berlin misses you as well and by oh, that yeah. i mean i do <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh man i guess i went to berlin at a pretty good time yeah you know i yeah. think so yeah it was like i think really... you came like like um light years i don't know like what the was the first period. time 2018 it, or 2018 yeah 2018 yeah yeah summer 2018 oh good times yeah. it was good. a good time yeah. Did you travel much in that trip? Did you went places? I did. I went. All, I went a lot of places. I went to. I went to Copenhagen. I went to. Uh, Rome. Oh. I went to, yeah, I went to quite a few places. I went to London. Oh. oh. I went to Paris. Yeah. Man, fuck! I missed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I missed oh no! Europe. Now that you. <laughs> 
Well, yeah, Europe is nice, but I feel like it's a good. I mean, yeah, okay, it's better than. Uh, yeah, Europe is nice, it but is nice. I, f I feel like if you're not from here, it's you don't have family. You know, it's a it's a different coat. Like I feel like it is nice, and that's why I haven't left. But like. I don't know. It's a it's a lonely place. It can be lonely. <laughs> you know, that's something I was I was thinking about like a lot, especially last month. I kept telling all my friends because I was in New York for uh, about a week, and I kept telling everybody, like all my old friends, I was like, I'm so lonely. I was like, I'm so lonely. I kept telling them that, and I met up with this one old friend who has two kids and she has a husband. And she has a house, and she has a job, and everything. What's her job? Can you say? She's it? a she's a she's a writer for <gasps> children's books. Ew. And, okay, sorry, <laughs> and, you got and, me in writer. <laughs> and she was like, "I'm so lonely," is what she said. She said, and that. I was like, "I guess it's just a human condition to feel lonely, you know, to feel isolated." Like I don't think. Um, I mean, I think there's some truth to us being social creatures. Like we do have to meet people and engage and talk and hug. And there needs to be some social interaction for sure. But I think, you know, to find somebody who like fully understands us completely inside out is like an impossibility, you know? Mm -hmm. No, I think... Uh... I, yeah, I mean, you can be, like, with a partner and feel lonely. Like, that's... But I feel like there's, like, levels of loneliness. Mm. Maybe she feels lonely because maybe she cannot share some experience because, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, maybe she has only single friends without kids and it's just like, oh, how, how can I share my life, blah, blah, blah. But I feel like Berlin... Is the loneliest place in the world. <laughs> hmm. Where, like, does, doesn't matter what you do, if you have friends or not, you just feel lonely. Mm. I know the feeling. Like, when I was there, especially, like, at night, you know, I would, like, at night, when I was in Berlin, I was so unhealthy. I would drink so many beers, and then I would get a dinner, and then I would... <laughs> Be... You wouldn't live in the culture. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like fucking 1, 2 a.m. And I'm like eating a whole fucking sandwich. And I'm so full. And it would be quiet at night. And I'm like, man, I feel so lonely and isolated. You know, even though I'm yeah. full. I'm full of food. I'm full of booze. <laughs> I was hanging out with a bunch of people just moments ago. But I feel so alone. And I think it's just... But it's, it's happening like, you to to you right now as well, right? You said it's happening to me right now at times. Yeah, but I mean that was mostly last month. Last oh. month, like it was really a perspective thing. I I was starting to think because you know I get jaded at times. Like LA, LA can be a very isolating place in the sense that it's really hard to know who your friends are here. Oh. Like. Uh, yeah, like the competition here is so fierce and everybody comes here with this uh, goal, like a big dream to accomplish. So um, people are not looked at as people. Does that make sense? Like yeah, like are they like pieces to make you uh, move forward to another yeah, place? Yeah, like opportunities. Mm -hmm. Um Sorry, can you lower the volume just a little bit on your headphones? Because I'm hearing myself back from the audio leak. Can exactly. you still hear me, though? Yeah. 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 Okay. Is that Great. better? Thank you. Yeah, yeah much mm -hmm. better. Thank you. It's, And I'm not saying that everybody's like this. Like, I do have friends. I'm, I'm lucky enough to say that I do have friends. But, like... You know, it, it's it's this is very common. It's a common phenomenon here, more so than anywhere else in the world. Like I can meet somebody and we can have the best time, like talk about deep stuff and share things and connect. And then we might never talk again. That happens so often here. Hmm. And when that happens, it's like, oh, like is there something wrong with me or is there something defective with me? But it's like, no, that's not the case. It's like, that's literally just a phenomenon that happens here a lot. Mm. And um, 
that's what I mean by that. I'm just and and so when I was thinking about that, I was like, okay, maybe Los Angeles is not my home, and it's not a place where I can really have friends. Like everybody I know here is just a coworker or a colleague,、um, and this whole city is not even a home. It's just a work office. Like the、oh. whole city is a workplace, and I was like, maybe if I think this way, I'll feel better about the situation.、Oh. And so I tried that perspective for about a month, and it didn't help. <laughs> yeah, I thought you were going to say it totally worked. <laughs> uh, 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 no, I thought I thought maybe like if I think that way, it'll help me just be like, oh yeah, like this is just the. Pragmatic reality of things, and this is just something I have to learn to cope with. But I was like, I don't, I don't need to think this way, because that's another extreme way of thinking. And you know, there are individuals here who don't necessarily fall into that pocket of colleague or coworker. You know, like,、um, yeah. So anyway, thinking that way made me feel more lonely. So I decided not to think that way either. It's just. I'm kind of just accepting that in Los Angeles, this phenomenon of getting really close to somebody really fast, there are chances of that disintegrating just as fast. If、mm. that makes sense. Yeah. yeah, I think it's the same here. I think you meet a lot of people, you get really friendly, and you go out and blah blah blah, and then at some point they disappear,、mm. and they don't, or they move away, or they just don't, don't not, you're not their friends anymore. I don't know why. Like it's. It's very similar in that way. Maybe like things last a tiny bit longer here because we are like all expats and like、yeah. we don't have families here or whatever, blah blah blah. So maybe things、right. um, take longer. I do have friends here actually, that so that's good. But it's、yeah. still like even though with your friends you feel so lonely. Yeah. Like it's like because I feel like sometimes when you have a big issue, you know, like.、Um, I think you can rely on your friends because everyone has problems in their life. So like、mm -hmm. you can like bitch about something or like try to get help on something for like a limited amount of time until、mm -hmm. it's like okay, this friend cannot. He doesn't. This person doesn't want to hear this more, and I understand why. But I haven't、mm -hmm. like finished the problem, and I need to keep talking. <laughs>、mm -hmm. uh, so I, that's what I feel like. It's like there's emotional support, but not really. As、mm. much as、uh, one needs for like real things, you know.、Mm. So that's why I think you you have to go to therapy or something because if if you just rely on your friends, like it's you're a bit fucked. Like I don't know. Yeah, I think therapy is very important for that. You know, and I think like as we get older, and it's just more like an adult kind of thing.、Mm. You know, I don't know. For me, I just. I don't feel like burdening people with my issues anymore, like as、oh. much as I used to.、Um, mm. it, and it's almost like, well, what's the point? Like, I'm just gonna go and complain to them and then fuck up their day, and it's not gonna solve my problem, you know?、Um, there's that aspect, like, of me worrying about the other party, and there's also this aspect of like, I don't know, like, that person probably has issues too. So I don't like I don't want to go and like say all of those things, and then there's also this worry of like feeling judged, you know, like oh what、mm. what if they judge me for my problems?、Um, mm. I have this one friend who、mm. she's like so, so、uh, she has such a hard time talking about her problems to her friends, and I was just it's almost like to the point of like you know you could share things with me, you know、mm. you don't have to feel so like. You know, anxious and pent up. Like you could let some things go. You know, it's okay. I've known you since we were very young. But she said, if I say it, I feel like it might become real, and that I can't deal with that fear. I was like, oh, okay. So that's a different issue.、Yeah. It's not because she doesn't want to share. It's because she feels like if she says it, it's too terrifying of a, a notion to her. So yeah, there are these、yeah. degrees to it. I think, yeah. Yeah, that I I I had that thing where if I、uh, talk about the problem, the problem becomes a, an actual material thing because you're like, this is the only way that you can actually occupy space by talking. 
yeah. in, in some sort of way, like occupying more space than your body, right? So yes. you're just like making this, like amplifying whatever it is that it happens to you. And sometimes it's yeah. like too much because you're like in the middle of trying to process it. Yeah. So, yeah. So I understand that, but it, in some point it, it's good to talk about it. It know? is. I think it's a lot better to process it verbally because, you know, I mean, I, I'm sort of figuring out like there are ways to do it, you know, like before, I don't know, like, especially like last year and the year before I was having such a hard time. And uh, there's this friend who like, I would call her and tell her some of my issues, but like, it would just be this toxic tirade of like me going on and on and on and naming every single complaint and naming everything that's wrong. And I, it just didn't help at all. And then I was, you know, like this past week when I was having therapy, we were, I was not really complaining so much. I was like noticing some problems, but I was noticing like some other aspects too. Like, okay, well, there's room here where I can, like some good things have worked out or there's room here. And I was sort of making a bigger connection to like a bigger story. And, you know, that's when I realized like, oh, like talking in this way does help with the processing. If I try to build it into a bigger perspective, like a bigger narrative, rather than only discuss my problem, if I talk about it as like, well, this has happened too. And one time I waited a little bit and this has happened. Mm. Once it becomes like a larger whole, then mm. it became less painful for me. And, and I was like, oh, I think this is the point. It's like, when I'm talking, I don't want to, I don't want to just feel agony and pain. Because mm. if I just do that, then I'm only going to feel agony and pain. Like what I want to feel is I want to feel better at the end of it. And I was like, mm. the way for me to feel better at the end of it is for me to piece together a larger perspective. Mm. I mean, if that makes sense. Yeah, um, it makes sense. Sometimes you just need to bend. So you just like ugh, bend. And then like when you, well, uh, for me, at least, like I yeah. sometimes I I need to, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm just like uh, if I'm very, is if it's emotional kind of situation, I I try to wait a little bit until like I can like not be so emotional about it, and then I can like bend a little bit because if That's if you bend, yeah, yeah. yeah, if you yeah. bend right away when things are happening, it feels like you're very um, vulnerable to people's opinions. Yeah. And, and every, everyone has an opinion and then that yeah. could actually I feel like people's opinion can really change the course or whatever it is that you were thinking and change your yeah. life actually even though it's yeah. like a stupid like a little opinion it yeah. is like when you're vulnerable you're like <sighs> I don't know yeah yeah at the time it could be triggering yeah no that's a good point yeah I think you know some time will give that perspective too because like the stuff that I was talking about in my last session, it was like things that happened a week ago. So I had a little mm. bit of time to like build in that perspective. But mm. a week ago, when I was talking about it, I was like nowhere near there. I was yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. I had sometimes it's yeah. What? No, sometimes it's actually... good like to have therapy after a little bit after something happened. Yes, like yeah, a little yeah, yeah. bit of days, so you can like not be like. <laughs> <laughs> Because your therapist is like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's absolutely true. Because, like, yeah, in the moment, it feels like that. But after some time goes by, you realize, oh, I, I am capable of getting over this. You know, like, in the moment, it just feels like I can't. You know, in the moment, it feels like I'm, like, never going to get over this. And this is always, this is a permanent thing. Like, that's what it <laughs> feels like. But I, I realized like over a few, the next few days, I'm just like, oh, like I, I'm, that's not as painful as it was a few days ago. I'm kind of over, like I had texted it to you last week when I said that that guy like called me a bitch while I was on stage. Oh yeah, like, that's you know, horrible though. That is a like, horrible experience to a, leave. I was in a terrible, I was in a terrible place. I was so <laughs> like, tr I felt so trapped in my anger. Like I didn't know what to do. And then, um. You know, luckily at therapy a couple of days later, but like, yeah, even during then it was terrible. But then this. But why? Why do they? What anyone else 
like the other people around, did they do anything? They just like laugh about a guy telling a woman bitch? Like, that's yeah, like-, like, I mean, it's a room full of men. They're not going to come and be like, oh, that's not nice. Nobody would ever say that. Guys will always stick with guys because it's not because they like one another. It's because they're afraid of what they're going to think of one another. It's very, very... Uh, pathetic actually the way that they <laughs> align it is yeah it's 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 performance masculinity is a performance and you know when a man calls another woman a bitch like he's being aggressive you know he's asserting aggression and men think aggression is power and so they're gonna be like "Ooh, oh ho, 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 you know that's <laughs> that's what that's what guys do and yeah. it's like uh it's a pathetic behavior. It's more heroic to be like, that's not cool. You know, like that's not fucking cool, but that's going to make him stick out and that's going to make him look weird. And that's going to make him look like quote unquote, a pussy because he's not abiding by the code of saying, Oh, it's because the alliance on one side. I, I feel like sometimes in comedy, we mistake, like, not doing that, not pu- putting people in places because we are entertaining. So if we do that, we, we break, like, a, a glass door and people can, like, be like, oh, this was not entertaining. Like, you know, some people are like, so, so they're like, yeah, it happened to me. I cannot really, I shouldn't talk about this, actually. But, yeah, it happened to me where uh, a host, like, took me out of the stage before my set was over because she didn't like that I was talking to the audience and making them laugh. I don't know. Like it was just, it was a funny experience. Um, That's crazy. And I was, yeah, and that never happened to me. And of course I had to pretend I'm super cool with it. <laughs> this yeah. is okay. Yeah. Because what are you going to tell people? It's like, exactly. this never happened to me. <laughs> exactly. That's, that's the humiliating part. It's like, yeah. after he did that, I'm still on stage. You know, and yeah. it's like, I could make a scene, I could, but what, how was that going to help? You know, like I just had to put up with it. And that's what made me really angry because I felt like so helpless up there. But anyway, uh, oh. like a few days later, uh, this girl called me. Uh, I haven't spoken to her in like months. Like she's one of those people who like, disappears and then like a year or two later i'll see her again like she's one of those and uh she called me for advice and she said that um the company that she's working at she's like a top salesperson there but they're very misogynistic they're Mm. like her boss is a man and the man is like you know i don't like to hire women because women are emotional like you are emotional like he's saying all the wrong things things that could get him sued right and he doesn't get sued well, she's working on it, but okay. uh, she, she was like, she was like, okay. She's like, well, what can I do to like, you know, have you take me more seriously at my work because I'm the best salesperson here. Meanwhile, men who are not performing as well as me, they're getting bigger clients. Like, what can I do? And that that's when the boss was like, oh, well, you're a woman and women tend to be emotional, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, it was just like terrible. So she says, she asks me, she's like, So I wanted to ask you for your advice. Should I go to HR and file this complaint and follow through with a lawsuit? Or should I quit because this is a small industry and I don't want them to think I'm a bitch? Oh. And I was like, be the biggest fucking bitch you could possibly be. Because who gives a shit what they think? You think you're afraid that they're going to think you're a bitch. I was like, what <laughs> makes you think being a bitch is bad? You know? Yeah. And also that's their opinion. Just because they have an opinion about you being this quote unquote bitch doesn't mean that you're a bad person. I was like, everything you're doing is right. Everything they're doing is wrong. This is perfectly qualified for a lawsuit. Don't be a pussy and <laughs> run away. Be the biggest fucking bitch you can be. And I was like, way more amped up and like aggressive and defensive when it came to this because some guy had called me a bitch earlier that week. <laughs> you know what You're I'm like, saying? Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah, because it's like what makes people think that 
me being a bitch is such an offense to them. It's like, I'm just being my best self as much as I can every day. And they think- go- they're going to think that I'm being a bitch. Go ahead and think I'm a fucking bitch. I don't care. And that's when it kind of like alleviated this feeling of anger in me. I was like, oh, yeah, he can think whatever the fuck he wants about me. It doesn't mean that I am that, you know, I, those I, guys, too. I don't think, think I don't think thing. being a bitch is a bad thing. It's not. I think we have to be bitches because if not, this system will never change. If we don't stand up and we are aggressive because like we are like, oh, they want to put us in the like emotional box and whatever. And we're trying to. I don't know, do change without being, um, I don't know, how they are. Like uh, how these guys, like the boss of your friend is. We try not to be that. We try to be the bigger person and be like, okay, how how can I make the change without being aggressive and horrible and whatever? Unfortunately. Meanwhile, meanwhile, he is behaving emotionally, you know? I like mean, I hate, it's like we all have fucking emotions. It's not exactly. like because I have a fucking uterus, I have more emotions <laughs> than you. Maybe I yeah. have more ovaries. Yes, I have more ovaries than you. We have yeah, testicles. Yeah. Will that work? <clears throat> no, they're outside your body. They're very sensitive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Everybody so has I, hormones. Everybody has emotions. It, everybody has cycles. It's I mean, like it's, ridiculous to reduce us to that. It's like, what fucking century are we in? Well, I, I, I like the, uh, you know, Djokovic, the tennis player. Uh-huh. <laughs> I know that. Yeah. I thought he was a nice guy before a lot of things. No. And then, no. uh, well, yeah, the COVID came and he was like an big asshole. But then, like, you know, uh, the, what's the name of, uh, I, I, I hate that I remember Djokovic's name and I don't remember her name. That she, uh, like, make a break in the Olympics, like the... Um, the gymnastic? No idea. I don't follow you don't gymnastics. Know. You don't follow gymnastics? Well, there was like an Olympic case. One gymnastic player, she was really good. She was going to win. But okay. she would, didn't feel mentally able to keep going because it was okay. too much pressure. All so right. she was like, I'm quitting. I'm quitting this right now because okay. I'm, not, I'm not feeling well. Which All is right. a, very, it's a p- very powerful move that no one has done it. Because okay. everyone keeps going until they, they break they themselves. Break. Or, yeah. Yeah. And then Djokovic was like, oh, what a fucking, like, oh, she's not, I, what, what, she, he criticized her. And then you see him on a game doing like a bad, like, I don't know, thingy. And then he's like slamming his thing and breaking everything and then like, cursing the judge. Like, I don't know. And I was like, yeah, I think you should maybe take a little break. <laughs> like, <I don't> yeah. Know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe, maybe don't criticize her. And then maybe stop doing that. <laughs> right, right, right. I was rewatching The Crown, and <laughs> do you watch that show? Yeah, I, I watch until the, uh, the last one, the Lady D. Yes, uh, yes. Here, so you yeah. know, you know. That, I mean, the last season was with Margaret Thatcher, mm-hmm. and she mm. talks about that so much. She's like, you know, do you want a nurse that's like, oh, they're there, it'll be okay, or do you want the nurse that's like, get up on your feet and make a move and i'm like i would want the they're their nurse because <laughs> i'm sick you know <laughs> like i want her to take care of me like i yeah. don't want her to push me beyond my limits but actually margaret Thatcher's voice well it, it, you know it was very deep it was um but actually that was not her real voice she had to make that voice to make her for the man, for the whole like man bullshit that they have over there. Oh, she's more of us because it's like because yeah. if she will be like, oh, guys, I think we should pass yeah. the law. Like no one is going to fucking. And yeah. it's uh, it's insane how um, yeah, a lot of a lot of women that are like in entrepreneurs and whatever they they have to be more masculine in some sort yeah. of way, portray masculinity, yeah, yeah, yeah or yeah, like yeah. what we think it is, yeah. For sure. Like, even when I'm on stage, like, because I have a pretty low register voice, I'll, Mm. like, intentionally make it, like, sort of nasally sometimes when I first get up on stage just to get their attention, you know? And but but like, is nasally more women? It's more more comedic. It's more comedic. Like, um, if you look at a lot of animated shows, like Mm. The Simpsons, 
you know marge mm. has a weird voice yeah you know <laughs> if you watch like uh if you watch family guy mm. you know lois has a weird voice if yeah, you right. watch bob's burgers linda has a weird voice it's like or even that show the nanny she has this like weird nasal, nasal voice. voice or even that show will and grace you know you have like what's her face the one with that high voice you know the the rich lady the, the rich lady man. i love that character <laughs> so like th there are these are it's really an archetype and it's mm. like an archetype that's very well known in the mainstream and i'm like okay so that's what they react to it's almost like getting a child's attention you have to animate your voice in a certain way because if i talk in this register the whole time they're gonna start yawning yeah because like this voice is not conducive to comedy this voice is conducive to like being a professor or being a lawyer or being whatever but it's not conducive to doing stand-up so like yeah. when i first get up on stage i do sort of like do like a nasally kind of register uh, yeah initially. i noticed i noticed that now because i'm i'm kind of doing this for a while sometimes i go on stage and i'm like really monotone or whatever and then i i just realized no i have to be like I don't know, like something like not like that. That's not the voice, but I'm trying to to be like it has to be kind of playful. Yeah. Kinda like yeah. It's like we are having like the best time, guys. We're so and I, like that. I think I think I'm using that voice. I'm like, dude, yeah. like yeah, how old yeah. are you? you? We'll totally have it. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And I'm yeah, and then after like flirtatious always, in a way. Yeah. Yeah. And then afterwards I'm like, oh, I'm so drained. <laughs> like, yeah. I, it's a lot. It takes a lot of energy to do that. Um but yeah, like I, I think it's just a useful device. Uh but anyway, yeah, like the whole Margaret Thatcher season was so fascinating because the whole so thing good. was just about that. It was just about like emotion versus repressing your emotion meanwhile she like breaks down multiple times throughout the show you know like you can even tell like at times when the prime ministers are like we need to go to war you know it's like from an emotional place it's not from this like logical place it's always from an emotional place so you can just tell like oh throughout history when men say women are emotional it's like at least when women are emotional like maybe we'll break a plate or yell but you guys go and kill millions of people <laughs> i think we will never if if the world was run by women um we wouldn't have wars <laughs> We will have more tampons in bathrooms. <laughs> like, I feel like that will be, I don't know. But I feel, I don't know, I remember I was um, I was hosting this show with another comedian. It was actually his show. And I was, like, the guest host. And I was, like, doing, like, a lot of input. I was putting, like, a lot of input in the show even. I mean, of course, like, you know, if someone would do the same, I would be, like, a bit like, well, I don't know, it's kind of my show. But I was not doing anything, like, super invasive. I was like, oh. Yeah. Uh, maybe we should put the woman here instead of like making it here. Maybe yeah, I'm more aware of like the diversity of uh -huh. the lineup uh -huh. or whatever. And I kind of wanted, even though I was a guest host, I kind of wanted to do host the first half because that is more challenge for me in that in uh -huh. that moment. And, uh -huh. in, and he agreed to it. And then in some point, I think I said something, and this happened like 15 minutes before the show or 10 minutes before the show started it was an open mic anyway okay and he went bananas i said something and he went bananas he he was like oh do you think women can like run the world better and you guys think that you you have everything figured out and then it was like open a pandora box of like sexism and like things and i was like what the fuck is happening like i just do like we're gonna do this like conversation right now and this doesn't have anything to do with this I mean, if you have pro a problem with women being more progressive and like oh, or women in, space, in general, he just and has women a in general, with women in yeah, general, it sounds yeah. like really like that. And I was like, and I had to be, and I had to take care of him, even though I was the one putting my face and having to deal with all this abuse. You know, I had to like uh, host the first half, so. No, it's such an antiquated argument that it's not even valid anymore. But because no. it was an, it's an argument that existed it, like at a certain point in time, mm. they continue to fall back on it. But it just doesn't work. And it doesn't work. And also, as women, because we got this like um, complaint for so long, 
Yeah. It's actually it's actually proven that women are in the workplace well more emotionally behave than men. Yeah, because we just know men, how to deal with it more. Because it's like, oh, it's uh, we have this like a stigma of being emotional, so we're not emotional. We're just like emo. We have emotions, but we're like, you know. And guys get angry, get they raise their voices. They can like. Like, you know, do yeah. this on a table and whatever. And that's emotions yeah. and that's not okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But no one has told them, hey, yeah, so that's also an emotion. <laughs> and, you know, the, uh, she has a point. <laughs> yeah. No, it's such bullshit. But anyway, um, this friend, like, I was just like, yeah, so just be a bitch. And she was like, okay. And she's like, I'm oh, glad yeah. I called. She's like, I'm glad I called you. I was like, I was like, I'm glad you called me too because... I kind of needed this just as much, you know, like, um, <clears throat> so anyway, yeah, I guess that's what I mean about like, you just sort of let time play its course and things sort of fall into place and you get a better perspective later. Um, yeah. but anyway, since, uh, you know, I don't want to eat up too much of your time. Um, let's do this flashcard I, series. I, I don't want to. I don't want to be a bummer, but I'm not doing anything after this. <laughs> so I have a bunch of we can we can talk. After. I'm going to refill this uh, glass a bunch of times. <laughs> That's my whole <laughs> man. I miss drinking. I was just like, <laughs> I, I was watching you TV saw... the other day, and people are like drinking martinis and smoking cigarettes. I was like, man, I miss that. I miss I miss drinking and smoking. I when did you so quit? Fun. Huh? When did you quit? When was the last time you drank? I, I quit drinking like two years ago, and I quit cigarettes. Oh, wow. like, I quit cigarettes like eight years ago. Oh wow! Okay, That's okay. So, uh, all right. So, uh, so what, we're, the... what? Wait, what we're we doing? This is a special thing. What are we doing? We need to present it. Like, I know, I know, it's a special thing, but I didn't really prepare much for it because I realized that I'm re we're recording this a little bit early because. <laughs> Actually, three years earlier. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I have I have something for you, but I will I will do it at the end. Yeah, and let's actually, do it at the end. Yeah, yeah, and it's actually for me, but it's also for you. Oh right, that's right. Okay, it's kind of like that <laughs> hug. It's for it's for it's you. For everyone. <laughs> got, it, got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Okay. No. So this is this is the hundredth episode, but just to sort of like you know, uh, sort of reflect, sort of look back, like. When I started this, it was, I, I was doing the pre-production of this back in like November. What are you writing? I could hear everything. I know, I know. I'm doing this. I, 100 episodes. <laughs> you can... <laughs> <What>? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, when I, when I was doing the pre-production, it was like, it was 2020 and at the end of 2020 and I was doing pre-production and I remember I was just so nervous and I had like, I thought I knew why I was nervous. I was like, it's, I'm nervous because I have to buy an expensive mic and I'm nervous because I have to buy a website and I have to buy this. I have to buy, I'm spending so much money on this and that's why I'm nervous. And I realized like, that's not, that really wasn't the reason why I was nervous because I had just never done it before, you know, mm. like I had never done a podcast before i have never you know invited guests to talk when i wanted interviews before like I, I it was just all new to me and um so it was like a terrifying experience actually i was just like in so much anxiety the whole time and uh having you on the first episode actually helped me a lot it just like really helped me stay grounded you know i need to like... watch that again like <laughs> I don't, I don't remember what I, I it, it was it man. was like it's like not even good and and your <laughs> your video quality like on the recording it was so poor <laughs> that I couldn't put your video in so like we don't even see your like video it's just your like picture every once in a while it'll come up like it's just mostly me it was just like the quality was so like the quality is what it is but it's not what I would do today knowing what I know now but you know? the quality now is good of the image, right? I mean, the quality now is like closer to what I, what closer to what I want now. But I'm sure like time will pass and I'll be like, oh, that, that's not how I want it either. You know, like it's just going to change. You know, it was also like that episode was so long. You know, I was talking so much and, you know, like 
over the course of these episodes, I just, I learned a lot about like myself and how to do this podcast. I became more confident, you know, and it's helped me in like more than one way. It like, um, because I'm editing, I'm editing on the software and stuff. So after I was like doing that, I was like, oh, I'm spending like eight hours editing one podcast episode. Like I can edit my movie, you know, like I can go back and edit my movie. So I finished editing that and then that went to a bunch of festivals this past year. And oh, cool. like, yeah, this d- doing this made me more comfortable being on camera. So like I've been doing more like audition self tapes since last year. And, you know, so like it's just helped me in so many ways. So like I'm just so happy that um, I got to do this. And I'm so happy that you were with me on the journey from the beginning. So I just want to thank Aww. you, show you my gratitude. I thank you for having me. I realized that I don't speak English. When I was doing your podcast, I was like, dude, you're not speaking. You're just doing this. <laughs> and I was like, you should work on your fucking English. Can I say more facts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. You, no, like every time you were a guest, you were always great. Um, so like, let's close on a, a, a flashcard series. This is a show that came out 10 years ago um it's called the moon embracing the sun and it has it has a big star name um kim suyun is his name he's like this very beloved actor but anyway it's it's a story about like a king finding his queen so it's like set during the chosen dynasty hundreds of years ago so that's the that's the premise it's a period piece we'll put it that way okay but it's a korean korean period yes yes Uh and during the korean kingdom when the korean monarch was still in place so uh let's say that you're a young prince okay you're a young prince and you know (laughs) you're you're a teenager you're a teenage young prince okay Uh, how old i am like 15 okay cool (laughs) yeah. <laughs> why is that important that's such a funny i mean, I mean is, is such a difference between 16 and 17 i'm just saying <laughs> okay that's true that's true that's true okay okay like you're you know mid-teens and you uh you meet a lady okay you meet a lady young lady she's a girl okay and you're just so <laughs> taken by her you're like oh my god she's so like cute and like wonderful like oh my god like i want to marry her okay Really? So and, okay. Yeah, it's super fast. It's super fucking fast. That's how it, that's how it goes back then. It's like we're gonna die, so we have to get married and have sex and have a lot of children right now. So, um, they're both teenagers. They meet. They like each other. And you know, his family and the kingdom. They say, okay, it's a go. Her family. They're like, yeah, we're we're you know upper class people. Yeah, this is royalty. Fucking go and become a queen. Excellent. Okay. The night before the wedding, she dies. <laughs> what? <laughs> How? <laughs> she gets sick and she just fucking dies. What do you do? <laughs> the husband, I was, wait, okay, uh, first. Before she was dead, uh, did I uh, place any hands in any parts? <laughs> no, no. Did I kiss her? No. Nothing. Nothing. Oh my god, I'm so sexually frustrated. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, it sucks. It sucks. <laughs> you were really looking forward to it, and she fucking died on you, man. Ugh. Um. Okay, I will uh, ask to see the corpse. <laughs> uh, I guess if she was sick, well, but in that in that era, uh, no one thought about getting. No, they they did. They quarantined her. They were like, what she has is a contagious disease, and the king needs to stay. The the prince needs to stay away. It was so like, yeah, even, I couldn't even couldn't see even, her all dead no. and stuff. She was like literally standing outside her house, like crying. <laughs> Oh, oh God! Oh, I'm so sorry for this kid, and also yeah. me because it, it's me. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like in that time, you know, people just wrote letters 
whenever something mm -hmm. happened. So I guess I would just write a letter to my kingdom and be like, hey, yo. <laughs> no, I don't know. Um, hey, yo. <laughs> kingdom. So, yeah. so she, she did. Uh, <laughs> so she did. Right. Anyone, you know, I think that's how apps were invented. Like, it's like, is anyone, you know, about this height and like into killing animals in the woods? <laughs> like, I don't know. Somebody anyone, that is just princess? like her, but not her. Yeah. Any like cousins or. So you would literally start looking for another wife immediately. Okay, okay, okay. No, yeah. no, I, I wouldn't do that. Of course, I will be. In that the makes pain. sense. Yeah. But I feel like for a novel <laughs> for like uh something that is going to be watched by millions of people i should be just trying to fuck again <laughs> like, yeah yeah and yeah. your you friends will to... be like mm -hmm. dude it was the, just a woman because yeah. like, back then it was a big thing being just a woman so yeah, like... <laughs> just a bit. yeah she's just some bitch yeah you'll find dude, another one hey i think in the kitchen there's a bunch of them <laughs> yeah and you'll be like but they raised me <laughs> they're yeah. like older old ladies and, so, and, and one will be like, come, my child. And then um, maybe I will, I will get the, the flower on my wedding night, but not by my dead wife. Okay. okay. <laughs> oh, maybe. No, wait. Maybe uh, my best friend. Okay, I got it. I'm going to do something like The Hobbit. Like, I, my best friend will be like, dude, no, I have the rings. Oh, no, so sad. And then we hug, and then... This like gay thing happen. Oh, <laughs> turn it into a gay story. Okay. Oh, okay. that I like. Oh, I like where this story is going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your potential wife dies, so you're like, you know what? Actually, thank God, because I'm I'm a huge gay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, uh, um, you know what? I was I was never a king. I was always a queen. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, that that's where it goes. Amazing. Yes. Uh, and that's the title, by the way. I was never a king. I was always a queen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's okay. say, let's say that I'm gay now. <laughs> let's say that you're a uh, you're a young you're a young woman. You work for a shaman who works for the kingdom. Okay, she's like mm -hmm. the she's like the palace's shaman. Okay, and uh, you're her like adoptive daughter. All right, like spiritual daughter. So that's what shamans have. They have like spiritual daughters. Okay. So you serve this shaman and, you know, you work with her, blah, blah, blah. But you have no memory of your childhood at all. No memory. Okay. You just know that you were found by this lady and you were raised to become a spiritual person in the future. But. <laughs> You were going to marry a prince and he dies. <laughs> but one day the prince takes, no, the king, he's now a king. Okay. He's now a king. The, the time same is guy? The same guy? Yeah. yeah he, okay. I mean, you know, the prince has now taken over the throne. He's the king now. And the king takes a look at you and you look very familiar. In fact, he's like, oh my God you're that dead princess lady i was supposed to marry like you were supposed to be my wife and you're like bro i don't i don't think so but at the same time <laughs> it's like he's the king he's the king what do you do um so first i want to say that in those times syphilis was a big thing and syphilis kind of makes you crazy i'm just like <laughs> If you let it sit. Anyway, uh, now we have vaccines. I just wanted to give like a little um, info. Anyway, if I was this woman, hmm, I think, <laughs> I think because I have like an, a spiritual power that he truly believes in. Okay. Because I'm a shaman or whatever shit. Yeah, yeah. So I could totally manipulate this guy to be like, oh, yes, it's me, the dead princess. Uh, can I sit over there? <laughs> oh, no, we cannot have sex. Because, oh, no. Did she, like, throw cards or tarot? Is that a thing? Or I'm just, like, uh, talking with the spirits? <laughs> what is my, my power there? 
you actually have zero powers because you're not a shaman. You were never supposed to be a shaman. You but were... no, I'm not. A, I'm not the the shaman's uh, apprentice. You are. You are. <laughs> but like, you technically, have no powers. Like you were. So the backstory is. All right, I'm not even going to get into the backstory. Just answer the question, and then I'll get into the backstory. <laughs> oh, no. You, you have zero powers. You don't have any powers. Yeah, zero. But I don't like the the king. I mean, he's a king. You know, but he, he's is a handsome he my type? king. Is he has like I don't know. He's a hot king. He's like he's a, he's hot, king. He, he's hot. He's a hot king. He's yeah. a hot king. <laughs> well, you should start with that. <laughs> you, you should. He's a very attractive king. Not okay, I, not only is he hot, but he's also a king. Holy shit. Holy shit, holy. Anyway, uh, <laughs> I think I just made something. Uh, yeah, totally. I will be like, yeah, I'm your dead princess. Uh, well. Mm. Hello, oh. uh, you want to go on a date? <laughs> <laughs> or you want to get married right now? I don't know. <laughs> Let's make this happen, baby. We only have five years more of living. Hala, <laughs> uh, do you want to go on a date? <laughs> That's what you would say to the king. Okay, good. Very good. Very good. Pretty, pretty sure the day will be like, we are getting married right now. <laughs> but... <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Let's say that you are... You are the king's wife, okay? You're a queen, all right? You're you're somebody else. You're like, like after the king, the the princess, princess lady died. He married somebody else because that's but not the, you have not the shaman. The shaman, no, no, she died. She died. She died. How could he marry her? So he got married to another queen lady, okay? Let's say you're this queen now, all right? Okay, I'm the queen. As the queen, <laughs> let's say you've been hearing rumors that the king has been hanging out with this shaman lady that looks a lot like his dead fiance from years ago what do you do wait wait a minute so he was married when he was like all flirtatious on me fiance not married fiance oh wait what I'm... wait what wait hold <laughs> so on he, he he had a fiance when he was younger he was a... and then the fiance died yeah, yeah, yeah. But now he's married with another queen. Now he's married. Yeah, and, and has then a wife. He took a look at me, and yeah, he's he did. Like, and yeah, he's like, but, but you're not her right now. You're you're the queen. I'm the fucking queen. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, I do have a lover, so. But <laughs> and he's oh boy, cute as fuck. I well, but I'm pretty sure in the series. I'm I don't so have confused by what you're saying right now. Wait, what lover are you talking about? You have a well, lover. I'm a queen. Okay, so uh -huh. one time, so you have a bit of background. I, one yeah. time, I went to a castle in Sicily. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's the same. So, yeah. But yeah. basically, the the married uh, king and queen, yeah, have uh, different um, floors. So the king was in the upper floor, and the queen was in the ground floor. Right. Okay. She she had her whole like bathroom, like library, like bedroom. It was very dark. Everything. It was very big. back in the day. It was nice that it's dark. I don't know. Are you in just describing time. like a general Sicilian kingdom right now, or are you talking about your what's happening to you right now as the queen? No, I'm talking about that, but I'm going to get on that point right in a second. <laughs> I'm going to okay. be so, so basically this queen had the whole like blah 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 and then this guy had like la 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 and, and there was like a weird uh stair like a, a staircase going okay. around there were like a weird staircase yeah. sure. going to yeah. to exits okay <laughs> and i asked i asked the the guy dude and i was like why are these like things and he was like well these are the staircase prepare for the lovers of the queen and the king to leave the to leave the palace without being seen by the other one. Got it. Okay, secret stairs so that lovers can come and go. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm the queen. He's looking at this other shaman lady. Yeah. I am a pole. But <laughs> But I also have a hot guy that I fuck every <laughs> Oh. I have my okay. own story going on, baby. Got it. Now I understand <laughs> why you were talking about the li 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 and the la la la. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I have stairs. <laughs> Do they have stairs? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, great. Great. Okay, so you have your own lover, so you don't give a shit. 
fine all right all right all right let's say you're this you're that young shaman girl lady now okay, okay. <laughs> you you find out that you actually come from a noble birth all right a noble family you have a mom and dad okay but the night of your wedding when you were supposed to get married to the king you got very sick and then you died because there was some prophecy that this shaman heard that if you and the king get together like on that night some bad shit is gonna happen so to prevent that from happening the shaman made you take some medicine that's gonna make you fake your death but you don't actually die and then you come back like you come back to life but you just have no memory of your past life but your memories just come flooding back to you and you realize like oh my god i was supposed to get i was supposed to be a queen and everything like this is such bullshit blah 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 and you know all of this but the reality is the king is married to a queen and you're just a shaman lady nobody's gonna believe you what do you do i'm going to kill my shaman dude <laughs> oh my god I mean, fuck it. He kind of fucking ruined my life because he had like a thought about my. Who is he to design my future? Apparently, I'm noble. I like I'm a noble person, right? Yeah. God, motherfucker. <laughs> so you would just get really mad at your your shaman mother person. Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to put like a little roofie on his drink or whatever it is that is what that was going on <laughs> on that time. Uh huh. And no. And bam, bam, uh -huh. he's dead, and I'm the new shaman lady. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, so you would you would commit murder and take over power, even yeah, though you're technically yeah, it's fine. In those days, you know, women In didn't kill. <laughs> In, women they didn't kill anyone. <laughs> right? Okay, great. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Final final question. Let's say you're the king. You find out the truth about this shaman woman that looks just like your dead princess woman okay you find out the truth you find out that she was the person you're supposed to marry you find out this whole bullshit history blah, blah blah you find out everything okay and you're like thank god i found her but you're still married to this queen what do you do okay this is a good comeback to the syphilis story that i told you about <laughs> All right, yeah so there was a king that had syphilis for a long time, and he killed all his wives. <laughs> oh. I should remember the name. I think it was Henry the Eighth or something. I don't know. Some, I don't know. You can see it. He was nobody. Uh, but they did, like, a, a series about him. It's called The Tudors. Oh. And they used, like, a very sexy actor. And he was yeah. having a bunch of sex. And then he was killing all his wives. Oh, my God. Yeah, so I will just, uh, well, apparently my wife has a, has been, been adulterous, so I oh. could, I guess, kill her. Yeah, <laughs> so that you can be an adulterer yourself. No, 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 because if I kill my wife, I just, I'm a widow, ooh, I'm oh. so sad, and then I can okay. just like, uh, you know, touch the boobies of that shaman. <laughs> Back in the day, boobies were a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. <But> but... <laughs> the boobies of that shaman lady. Great. Beautiful. Okay. Love it. Thank Sorry, you, Sorry, I, I couldn't give you more uh, creative answers because that, uh, that, that time, you know, it was very like that. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just being Italian right now. It was very like that. I'm Italian, so I can do this voice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, um, I, I think uh, these are some of the most creative answers I've, I've heard. <laughs> because with each answer, you had like a little tutorial, you know, about syphilis, <laughs> about Italian castles. <laughs> There's a yeah. lot of uh... that castle okay. really blew my mind. <laughs> you, you should go to Catania to, to, to see it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I would love to. Man, I miss Europe. Okay. Oh, Thank you. No, I'm just so Why don't we end this? Oh, should I do the special thing? Oh, yes, please. Basically, I, I, so basically, there's two things. I didn't blow a candle on my birthday that it was like two weeks ago. And, uh, and also, it's your thing. So I bought this like little unicorn, like, oh, isn't it cute? That's so, so cute. So we can like 
blow it, we can blow it to get together, but I will ask for three wishes and you can like ask whatever you want. And we, we have to go one, two, whatever. Three wishes. Yeah, what are you okay. gonna think? Ready. Okay. We did it. <laughs> Happy 100. You're so, you look great. <laughs> <laughs> Happy belated birthday. Oh, Thank you. Huli. Thanks Thank for you doing too. this. Thank you, Huli. Thank you. Sure. Have a nice day then. <laughs>